Treating your sheep and goats for gastrointestinal worms based off the Famancha scale is not only outdated, but it's also dangerous. Stay tuned to find out more. Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today I wanted to take some time to talk to you about the Famancha scale and how it's designed and how it actually works when treating gastrointestinal worms. Now, if you've been watching any worming videos on YouTube, you've probably ran across the Famancha scale. It's this card or color coordination chart that you see that tells you to check your animal's eyelids and compare the color of their eyelids to see if the animal has a worm burden that you should treat with a chemical wormer. Now this was developed because they were getting over medication with things like ivermectin. People were using it far too often and inappropriately and the worms were developing resistance against it. Now, I don't know who designed the Famancha, if it was backed by the chemical warmer companies or if it was just some nice people that decided to do it, but basically what they came up with was the Famancha chart. The Famancha chart tells you that you go up to your sheep or your goat or your animal that you're worming and you're going to look in their eyelid. And when you look in their eyelid, you will see a color. That color down here in this mucous membrane, this is an area of the body where the capillary bed is very, very shallow. And if you look, that mucous membrane should be nice and red. That red color represents the hemoglobin that's in the blood, which in turn represents how much oxygen is in the blood and how well you're getting oxygenation to the tissues in your body. Now, when we don't get good oxygenation to the tissues in our body, when we get small amounts of hemoglobin, when our hemoglobin drops, we refer to this as anemia. And anemia can happen for lots of different reasons. But the one that we're talking about here is due to a worm or parasite burden in the intestines or in the gastrointestinal tract of these animals. So what happens is parasites latch on to the lining of the stomach of these small ruminants and they suck blood. And when you get enough of them, they draw so much blood that they're actually taking and depleting the hemoglobin in the host's body and the host gets to be anemic. Now, there are problems with the Famancha scale. Few of the problems are the ones that I want to talk with you about today. Problem number one. Problem number one with Famancha scale is it's extremely subjective. We're asking millions of people essentially to look at a card that gives you five options of colors and to pick which one is most appropriate and closest to what you have. This can depend on lighting. This can depend on time of day. This can depend on how many times you pull that eyelid down to look. And from one person to another, they will rarely agree with what the color is. One person will say it's darker. One person will say it's lighter. And the worst part about this is, is it doesn't actually tell you what the worm load is inside of that host. This would have to be done by other means. And even in the cases of doing fecal egg counts, it's difficult to determine what the true worm load is in that animal. The reason for this is simple. Different animals handle a worm load differently. If you have a very large, very healthy animal, it may take a significant worm load before you see this pallor, this whiteness start to develop in the eyelid. If you have a sickly animal that's already stressed, you may see this pallor very, very quickly. The other problem is, is even with fecal egg counts, it just depends on the animal. Some animals shed eggs really, really heavily, some don't. So what does this mean? Why do we run into problems with the Famancha scale with this? Well, the problem is, is you can have an animal with a very heavy worm load that isn't necessarily manifesting itself. And the Famancha scale asks you to do this. And this is point number two that I have a problem with with the Famancha scale, is the Famancha scale asks you, the producer, to tolerate a worm load in your animal. It asks you, to do this, it asks you to say, hey, you know what, I know my animal has a parasite load, but it's not too bad. And so I'm going to let it go. That's the whole premise behind the Famancha scale is they said, we don't want you over medicating your animals. We don't want you overusing chemical wormers. We, we want you to still keep using the chemical wormers. Oh, please keep using the chemical wormers, but we don't want you to overuse the chemical wormers. So what they are asking you to do is if an animal doesn't have too much of a worm load, 
to hold off on worming and to check them again in a little while, maybe in a couple weeks, maybe in a month. And if it gets worse, then go ahead and worm them. Now wrap your head around that with me here. Imagine for a moment if you went to your primary care provider's office with your child and your child said, you know what, mom, dad, I'm not feeling very good. I'm feeling kind of weak. I'm always tired. And you take them into your primary care provider's office. Primary care provider comes in and says, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, thank you for bringing your child in today. I've got bad news and good news. The bad news is, is your child has a gastrointestinal worm load. Uh, they are currently harboring an unknown number of gastrointestinal parasites that are sucking the blood out of their system. But the good news is, is there's not too many of them there. At least we don't think so because your child isn't suffering from too much anemia. So we feel the best thing to do is to wait and see if it gets worse or see if somehow it magically gets better on its own, which probably isn't going to happen. Now, you probably wouldn't be too happy with this, and intuition probably tells you why this is a bad idea. And this is point number three that I wanna make. Allowing a parasite load to fester and to hang out in your animal's digestive system is putting that animal at increased risk for multiple other problems. First of all, the nutrition and everything that you're putting into this animal is not 100% going to this animal, it's going to parasites. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that you are going to have an animal that is always going to be clear of parasites, but we wanna do the best that we can do to keep them in the right direction and to keep them as reasonably free as parasites as we can. Now, you're setting this animal up for potential problems. Imagine if the weather changes, if the animal becomes stressed due to a move, if the animal becomes pregnant and becomes stressed due to the pregnancy, if the animal is a breeding male and they get stressed due to breeding. All kinds of things can occur. Any kind of bacterial or viral infections can hamper this individual animal that is already suffering from a problem. They're already slightly anemic. They already have a parasite load. And now you add another problem on top of it. There's a chance, very likely chance, that an animal is going to become very sick very quick. And all it's going to take is for this one little thing to happen. And you're going to notice an animal that has a somewhat red eyelid or a pink eyelid that the Fibonacci scale tells you is just fine to leave alone, all of a sudden go to white and have a problem. Or you're going to notice that if you actually try to worm this animal, they are going to all of a sudden get bottle jaw, get diarrhea, and get all of these problems because they're going into worming shock because they're dropping this worm load uh, rather quickly. So that brings me to the final point. And the final point is this. I personally feel that the Fomancha scale is antiquated, it's outdated, and we can do better for ourselves as producers and for our animals' overall safety and well-being without overusing chemical wormers. Chemical wormers are overused. I have no argument there whatsoever. People use them too darn much and too darn often. There are better alternatives for gastrointestinal worms, specifically copper sulfate worming. This is the reason why universities are switching to copper sulfate worming. It is safe and effective for sheep and goats. It does not give them copper toxicity. You do not get worming resistance to the copper. And if mixed correctly and used correctly, you can use this as often as every month or every two months. The reality is, is you're probably not even going to need to use it that often, but you could if you needed to, and you don't have to worry about any problems. It's very, very in inexpensive. It can be mixed at home and it is extremely effective. Chemical warmers do have a place on your farm. Copper sulfate works for barber pole worm, gastrointestinal worms. There are other uses for uh, ivermectin, for dectamax, for valvasin. There's tapeworms, there's liver flukes, there's nasal bots, there's keds, there's lice. There's all kinds of other problems out there that chemical warmers are used for and rightly so. But using these chemical warmers, ivermectin, valbazin, cydactin, uh, prohibit all of these over and over and over for gastrointestinal worms is a problem. And that's where I do agree with the Fomancha scale. I just feel that, you know, we used to use copper sulfate worming back in the day. And, and I mean, for years and years and years and years and years, this is how 
your grandfather and your great-grandfather, your great-great-great-grandfather and grandparents used copper sulfate effectively for warming until the chemical warmers came on the market. And now all of a sudden they're telling you, oh, no, 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 don't switch back to the safe, effective one that the worms don't become resistant to. We want you to switch up to this chemical warmer that, by the way, costs five times as much and you have to go to the store to buy and it, it's a disaster. So in many ways, it's kind of a scam. I get the point of it. I like the way that they package it and sell it, but the truth is, is it's just not realistic. So what am I telling you to do? What's, what's the take home point of all of this? The take home point of all of this is you need Dectamax, you need Valbazin, you need these chemical warmers for things other than barber pole worm and the gastrointestinal worms that you're going to get. While copper sulfate is safe and effective, a lot of times you need to get the animal on board and wormed appropriately with a chemical warmer before you can switch to the copper sulfate warming to do it safely without causing unneeded stress on that animal. We have videos about this. You can check them out here. If you have any questions, let me know. I just want you to do what's best for you and I want you to do what's best for your animal. If you have questions, if you have comments, if you have concerns, make sure you put them down below, share with the group, check us out on Facebook and on Lanasa Farms Tack Box. I'm Tim from Lanasa Farms, specialty in heirloom livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. I look forward to seeing all of you again next time.